Hello and welcome to Hibs Talk. I'm your host as always, Gavin. Joining me today is Stephen. Hello. And on telephone is Dave. Alright. So, obviously, we've got the sad news about Liam Miller passing away on Friday. We'll come back and talk about that uh, quite in depth in a minute. But Hibs ladies also got their season underway today with a 3-0 win over Spartans. 0-0 at half time, but a good team talk from Kevin Milne inspired the team to score three second half goals with Katie Turner picking up a double. They've obviously, it's been well documented how well they've done in the Cups the last few years. Um, but Dave, can, do you think they can go one further and win the league this year? Uh, it will be quite difficult. Uh, obviously, Glasgow City have won the league the last 12 years, so going for 13 in a row. So they'll be quite confident. It's the next step for a minute. It's like like you said, they have been successful, so they finished the last couple of seasons as runners up, so they will need to, that'll be the next the next thing they need to focus on. I fingers crossed they can go that one step further and end Glasgow City's dominance of that league. Uh, also uh, ex player wise, Anthony Stokes has joined Greek side right, I'm gonna give this a bash. Apollon Simrinus. Until then, Smyrna, Smyrna, right? Okay. Says on Wikipedia. Until the end of the season, um, Stephen, your thoughts on this? Best move for him, to be honest. There was no point in him staying in Britain. Um, a relegation battle, though. Well, you've got to take what you can get. Eh? He's a relegation battle kind of player now. <laughs> so, uh, nah, he's. Uh, I think it was definitely the best move that he could have taken. It was interesting with Bolton as well, but. Um, with his reputation over here it's just got to drag him down I think mm-hmm. he saw what he'd done when he was at Blackburn come back to Hibs it's carried on and um, now he's away to Greece where he's got a bit of a fresh start took the Liam Henderson approach new challenge abroad so mm-hmm. um, obviously if he plays well over there it'll give him a chance to come back maybe with a wee bit of form and find a better club so as long as it's not Hibs again <laughs> To me, I, he's always a player that's striked out. That he, I, I've, I've always seen him play in America, and I'm surprised he's made no made the move to a team in the MLS. But maybe that's just me. Still um, got another two years or three years before he goes there. I think. Do you think it's not always a retirement zone? I think it could be. There's a lot of players that do well when they're no, so well, right. You look. You look at Kenny Miller and Chris Boyd. He might go over there at 32, come back and play for Celtic. Oh my god. <laughs> Right, anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so the sad news obviously broke on Friday about Liam Miller. Um, Liam Miller, who started his career at Celtic, um, had a couple of successful loan spells before breaking into the Celtic team. Uh, done well for Celtic and then signed a free contract with Man United in 2004. A few appearances for Manchester United as well and then went on to play for Leeds, Sunderland and QPR before making the move to Easter Road. Um, we'll talk about his time at Easter Road in a second um, and after Hibs he went on to play in Australia, Ireland and finally in America. He also earned 21 caps for the Republic of Ireland so fantastic career he had but I think it's been well spoken about that one of his most successful periods was playing with Hibs so looking back at his time at Hibs, your favourite memories? Penalty against Hearts. Yeah. Uh, first goal against Hearts, probably the standout for him. Anybody that scores a goal against Hearts, it's got to be a standout. <laughs> Brian Kerr. <yeah. laughs> uh, Dave, your favourite memory of Liam Miller? Uh, it was the penalty against Hearts as well. Yeah. I actually just went back and watched it just to kind of like, just have a look at the game because everything that's went on and the length of time it took for the penalty to get taken. Um, it was cool as a cucumber. Finished it, so I have to say, I think my favourite memory of Liam Miller wasn't exactly a specific memory, memory, but was just the partnership he had with Kevin McBride. And if you look at Kevin McBride, everywhere else he's been with his career, he wasn't that special a footballer. But I think it's you know, um, compliments to Liam Miller the fact that he was able to bring out the best in McBride and let McBride just do the simple things of the game. and I thought they had a really good partnership and obviously Hibs have had quite a good few good partnerships in midfield over recent years but I think that was one you know helped us to what was it fourth in the league or something under John Hughes so yeah um, 
and that linked up well with Stokes in his first spell with the club. So, um, aye, very sad news about him uh, passing at the very young age, uh, 36, just four days before his 37th birthday. So I think it's obvious the club will make a big deal, and rightfully so, about it on Saturday. There'll be black armbands, a minute silence beforehand, I'm sure, and I'm sure there'll be another tribute as well. Um, what would you guys like to see the club do on Saturday? I think a minute's applause is better than a minute's silence now. Yeah, it's more like sort of celebratory. Mm. It's no, it's sort of doom and gloom, and it brings down the atmosphere a bit before a football game. I think you give them a minute's applause. It's like just reminds you. I saw cheering them on after they scored that goal against Hearts mm. and stuff like. But obviously, black armbands are a must. You look at what Celtic and Man U have done for him this week. Um, I think it's only right, it's only fitting that a player that quality gets the respect that he deserves. It. Yeah. Dave? Yeah, a minute, a minute to pause in like the 36th minute or uh, something like that. Um, because what's, obviously what Stephen just said, uh, Man United and Celtic have shown their respect towards him. Like you've had like, all the footballers come out like Sir Alex Ferguson saying there but it just shows you like how highly uh, respected he was and like where he was in his career and the fact that they came to Hibs and like you say like he had he's probably his most successful spell he's most, most successful he just he, he appeared for the club the most times and he scored the most goals for Hibs in his career than he did at any other club so he obviously did enjoy playing with the club as well so it would be nice to see uh, uh, like a really good tribute. Yeah, I think it'd be nice. I, I I think you should get both. I think the club should do, you know, a, a um a, an organised and official minute silence before the game with the black armbands and stuff, and then on the thirty third minute because of his number at Hibs or the thirty sixth minute because of the age he passed away. One of the two, um, the the fans should do a minute's applause as well. Um, I think that'd be nice. I think he. Yeah, he's earned both. And, and obviously it goes without saying that our thoughts go out to his family and loved ones. So we're talking about what tributes should be paid to Liam Miller. Obviously that's the game at home to Aberdeen on Saturday. So it's a big game for Hibs. So we'll have to move on and talk about that. Um, our recent farm has been strong. We've won four of our last five games. Obviously the one loss being... Uh, the one that lost to Celtic at Parkhead uh, Stephen what have you made of our recent form? No it's been really good um, positive it was a wee bit a downer not getting a, at least a draw at Parkhead uh, the second half we played a lot better I thought um, so I think that with the recent run of form the now and with the strikers actually getting back on the score sheet again it's got to make a big difference uh, as much as it pains me to say Scott Allen back in the midfield as well uh, with John McGinn and McGee both playing well um, it's got to help us leaps and bounds going into the second half of the season mm-hmm. so I hopefully we can keep it up Dave your your thoughts on Aberdeen's recent form? Well, obviously they've they've been playing really well. Uh, the only teams that they can't seem to turn up against is the old firm. Against the rest of the league, they're probably the, the most consistent out with Celtic, uh, which is weird because obviously we turn up against the old firm and give them a game. Mm-hmm. But then when we play Aberdeen, all right, we done all right in the one nil Easter Road. Um, they kind of came like smash and grab, uh, but. The game up at Petardry, they just ran out of the top of us. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, I, I, me personally, um, I think it's about just as much a, a must win um, game as there's been all season. Because if we want to like stay in touch, the Aberdeen and Rangers, and not just be that fourth on our own, then we do need to we do need to be picking up points on Saturday. Yeah, big game, and I mean a, a draw or a loss really. Well, I, I'm not going to be good enough. I don't think I, I completely agree with you there. Both these have kind of talked to, talked about a wee bit, but our, our kind of form against them it obviously depends on how they play. Like Dave sort of said about they came for a smashing grab at Easter Road, but I doubt they'd take that same approach considering how well they've done against us at Pataudry. 
how do we stop them from you know either doing a smash and grab again or giving us our heaviest defeat which of the season which was a 4-1 up at Pataudry um. <laughs> come on Neil how do you fix this <laughs> uh, I, wish, I wish Neil Lennon had an answer for this as well but I don't think he does um, I mean every every club has their bogey team and mm. it seems like Aberdeen have just been ours over the last couple of years um, obviously they beat us in the Scottish Cup semi last year um, still no beat them this season we've had a couple of close games with them but the, the result of Audrey, like that was just something else. Mm-hmm. Club never shown up, up at all. Um, it's good to see that Marciano's getting back to form, which I think will make a big difference. He's did a, not have a good game up at Pataudry. Nah, 100%. But the thing is, like he's always been a good shot stopper, and it's Gary Mackay Stephen that seems to be like scoring a lot of their goals now, mm-hmm. and he's scoring a lot of their goals for in the 18 yard box. If Marciano's on form then I think that a lot of their goals will, or chances will be cancelled out and the defence looks a lot more solid with Ryan Porteous in it as well um, you've got three strong centre mids so um, I mean with the strikers scoring you can't see us like getting beat to nil uh, it'll be a close game so I just hope that we get a result Dave, what's your thoughts on Aberdeen's danger men? Who do we really... Obviously, Stevens just talked about Gary Mackay. Stevens quite a bit there. Is there anybody else that we really need to keep an eye on? Uh, well, apart from Mackay, that's the problem. We've got such a strong squad. You've got uh, Kenny McLean. What's his brother's name that played with Hibs? Oh, uh, Graham Shinney. Uh, Shinney. Uh, he strolled it last game yeah. Absolutely strolled it So I had McGinn in his back just, pocket We just need to kind of show Aberdeen like, At the end of the day They're a better squad than us We just need to show them Probably that respect mm-hmm. like, put, put in the same like Effort and that we did against the old firm Against them I don't know if it's like I, don't, I just don't know why, why we, It doesn't seem to work Right. I mean, we, 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 to me, they've got a better squad and they're a better team than Rangers, but we seem to give Rangers more and more respect, or we did, Aye, but is especially it, is that away. Because Neil Lennon, like, the prep and lead up to the game, he's like, there's like a determination because it's Rangers, like, we need to beat them. And then it comes to Celtic, we're like, come on, like, we need to give them a game, they're the best team in the league. Like, so, are we no doing that with Aberdeen? Like, the, the, the same, do you know what I mean? We should be because I mean that Aberdeen are we the, should, they, they should be, we should be on the same level as them and I mean I've said this a few times it's my personal view that they're a few years ahead of us in terms of their you know the manager's been there for a long time they've been in the Premier League and they've been building a Premier League squad whereas our um, building has been towards getting back into the Premier League the so last... what's R- Hibs reasons to be hopeful going into the game uh, well Scott Allen <laughs> <laughs> Me personally, like the way he was like, linking midfield and attack at Ibrox in that first half was exactly what I've been missing. Mm-hmm. So, so it was apps, like just, just that wee bit of creativity there again. Now, uh, obviously, the, the Cam, uh, Camberry uh, scoring against Motherwell, he's looked quite lively. Like goal straight off the mark. Um, obviously, McLaren getting his goal. Like I don't even know if he'll play. Probably be benched. Hope not. He looked lively against Rangers and linked it well with Scott Allen a couple of times. Um, yeah, and then uh, just I think well, the way we've been playing and the fact that we recent form, like we've got quite a lot of reasons to go into this game. But hopeful that we are going to get a result. Aye, I know our recent form has been particularly, like you said, is one of the main reasons. Um, and and maybe the fact you know you look at the squad, the team that played up against. Um, uh, Aberdeen at Patoji, we had Murray up top, Barker played that day, who's injured. Um, I think did Bartley play in midfield, mm-hmm. Ambrose at right back, McGregor played that day, I'm sure. There's a lot of these players that we shouldn't be playing, so and there'll be new players coming in, so and the likes of Scott Allen, Camberry, McLaren, so it will be a slightly different team. So maybe reason to be hopeful, we're trying to put a positive spin on this here. Um, Stephen, what do you think? Result wise, yeah, just about you know what 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 can 
Hibs <laughs> fans get excited about the game. Just that we're scoring goals again. Yeah. I think the the link up, like Dave says, between midfield and attacks there again is what we've been missing pretty much the full first half of the season. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of relying on John McGinn, Boyle and Barker for that, mm-hmm. putting in the crosses and stuff. But now that we've got three like solid attacking centre midfielders, like you're going to get goals again. Um, I think, like Dave says as well, with Scott Allen coming in and link, finding that link-up play between Canberra and uh, McLaren as well, it's always got to do us wonders. So um, there, there is positives there. I mean, is Aberdeen's first choice goalkeeper not injured as well? Yeah, that's always a positive. So, but uh, I think that Danny Ward's not a bad keeper. Ah, well. it's not. But like what he spent the last two seasons on loan at Falkirk or mm. something. So we tried to get him apparently. But then they got Marciano instead, which worked out for I, I would have worked to do better there. But, <laughs> but, um, uh, there, there is positive. We've, we've just got options there, though. Like, we can go through the middle with Scott Allen. Yeah. Whereas, mm. whereas before it was like, oh, the ball's going to go wide, Barrow Aye. Barker, put it in the box. Like, but now we've got go left, right, do we go down the middle? Like, I don't know, I think we could probably ask questions of a lot more teams now that way the setup that we can go with it. If it wasn't for the defensively, I mean, this is sort of coming on to lineups now, we're kind of talking about that. Um, part of me would like to see Riaz playing at right back, maybe even in a back five, just because of um, being able to put crosses into the box. When we do go, go out wide, because I'm sick of Effie Ambrose either putting in a horrendous cross or not crossing, the, the problem is with him, is he doesn't look like he's got much defensively. And that's what I've heard from a few Hearts fans. He'd be on that right side, and that's where he'd be coming up against Gary McKay Stevens. So, how would you guys line up with it? We're thinking about their dangers, not going through the whole 11, but just sort of picking out a few, couple of key points. How would you guys line up? See if we can start with you. 3 5 2. Right. Um, I'd play Porteous, Ambrose, Hanlon at the back. Put Swanson on the left, give him a chance, see if he can make the grade. As a wing back though. Well, I mean, he's got a, he's got the pace to run at players. He, he puts in a decent cross. Mm. He's done he done well against Dundee when he come on. So I would um, Boyle. Uh, let's see, Camberry and McLaren up front. Okay. Give him a chance, obviously. Scott Allen McGuick, McGinn in the middle. Dave, what about yourself? Oh, uh, wouldn't he drop Lloyd Stevenson? No, nah, neither would I. Yeah, Steve, uh, Stevenson left back, and then the thing is that see the whole Ambrose no Ambrose no crossing the ball. Uh-huh. It's like surely that's just an instruction, though. Like say, because he's so poor at it. <laughs> Because he's so poor at it. I agree with Dave Aye, on that point. Him, let's get a and just need to tell him when you get in that position, swing it in. I think, I think you are right on that point though in the fact that it's he, he makes a run right up to like a, the edge of the 18 yard box uh-huh. and then he finds a back pass or he, or he waits for Boyle to overlap and then put in the cross like somebody who's got the ability of Ambrose mm-hmm. he's, he's definitely able to put in a cross of some sort I mean you look at like how poor Stevenson's crossing's been <laughs> for the last 10 years and yeah he still puts in a cross I think that it is something to do with an instruction yeah. to say that Ambrose is not a cross because it, they need him to be able to run back mm. not um, that it does much running but no <laughs> um, I, I agree with you though I'd like to see Swanson play um, I'd I, I'm torn between going for the, with the back five to give Rias a bit of protection for play him, or going with a second with a four, two, three, one with playing or whatever you want to call it with Scott Allen in the hole, um, McLaren up top, and then Parker out on the left and Boyle out on the right. That's maybe what what I'd be thinking because we're at home, really go for it. Parker, sorry, <laughs> sorry. What did I say? I meant Boyle on the right and Swanson on the left. <laughs> That's what I meant, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, score predictions then. 3-1 Hibs. 3-1 Hibs for Steven. Dave? Uh, Go on, give it a negative percent. 2-1 Hibs, you said. Okay, um, my heart says 
Uh, one nil Hibs. My head says one one. So mm, I hope my heart's right. <laughs> so we're going to finish up today with a quick question. Ties into the Aberdeen game because obviously it depends on the result on Saturday. Can we qualify for Europe? Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> Need you expand on it a bit more than that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't, I can't say no because I turned around like, just at the end of the year and says that we've got to finish second in the league. Right. So, I. <laughs> <laughs> because we've got to finish second in the league still right. we've got to beat Aberdeen and then Rangers will probably pick up a draw at the weekend Dave can we qualify for Europe? we can I just I'm slightly more pessimistic on it right. I just think the Rangers squad is really good especially when they get their injuries in that back and they seem to be becoming a bit more consistent even though we seem to have one up on them all the time um, and obviously Aberdeen squad's better so it will be tough but I would like to see us get a really good goal yeah. is, is it not this year that we went back up to four places in the coefficients? No, not yet I don't think I might be wrong on that. It's either this year or next year. I, just, I, all, all, I remember um, one of the radio. This is giving me an idea for this. I heard one of the BBC people talking about Ken Hibbs after after beating Rangers. Ken Hibbs qualify for Europe and finish in one of the top three places. Oh, um, perfect. So I don't know that they they might have got that wrong. They might be we might have sport for spot available, or it might be we get later on. Um, I don't know, but. It'll probably be the next again year actually because this year Celtic have qualified for Europa League so yeah oh, it doesn't matter um, I think it all depends on who wins the cup as well because the next opposition will go to fourth ah oh, is that alright right enough Hearts will win the cup this year so <laughs> um, right, obviously I'm on the phone give him a slap <laughs> so if it's a aye because we need it like Celtic and Rangers in the final or Celtic and Aberdeen in the final if they finish in the top three so the runner-up doesn't get it and then it would go to the fourth place in the league. Is that right? Correct. Right. Yes, I think so. Right, so we do still have an outside chance if... Um, but we're not going to finish fourth. We've got to finish second. Yeah, OK. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think qualifying for Europe either, you know... I, I think qualifying for Europe through the league in the, one of the top three places massively depends we know Scott Allen's ability we know he'll hit the ground running Camberry has looked positive in his first two games um, and obviously scored against Motherwell but it's still early doors same with McLaren the fact that he's no getting the team say it's match fitness but I'm slightly worried that he's taking so long getting to the team I think it depends on how they do if those two can hit the ground running from, the, from here on out and start scoring lots of goals and replace the goals with Murray and Stokes, um, but make the team play better as a as a whole, you know, because I think as good as Stokes and Murray were, they didn't work as a partnership, um, and they didn't work with the rest of the team. Whereas now we've got Scott Allen to kind of play in that third midfield role, gives us a bit more options rather than just always going out wide like you were saying, Dave. I think a big miss, although Stephen will disagree with me, agree with me, is Barker being out for the rest of the season. <laughs> No, I'm not even going to argue this point now because <laughs> as, I was actually speaking to my neighbour about it yesterday uh-huh. and Barker, he did start to find form. I, st- I still don't think that he should have been playing because his finishing and his last ball is awful and for the fact that he's still playing so bad after six months. Mm-hmm. like I think that my reasons were justified but he is a miss with his pace. He's, he's never a 90-minute player. And I think that Swanson's got a lot more about him in terms of ability. Uh, Barker's like a, a crap boil. <laughs> 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 but even then, Boyle's not got much uh, uh, finishing touch now. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes over the next couple of months. I think that he will be missed as a squad player mm-hmm. but we can do without him ok well um, last note on 
Twitter and Facebook and that if you guys think we can finish in a European place I might put up a poll once the podcast's up you guys know I love a poll so um, I, Dave thank you very much for phoning in today no worries Stephen thank you very much for coming in he got a bit of cake for coming in even though he lives around the corner definitely worth it <laughs> and Dave lives what 25 minutes away um, still yeah I didn't get cake <laughs> Okay, right. Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you um, after the Aberdeen game.